All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And in my ever never ending quest to have people better understand the Rankin Technical College AWD 1000 Web Development Technologies and Rankin Technical College AWD 1111 Database Driven Website Development Classes, I've been going through and creating some video presentations that are based off of the ebooks from Mr. Flavio Copes. And so far I've done his HTML ebook, and now I'm in the middle of his ebook for CSS. And the next thing that they talk about in here is CSS media queries. All right. And they haven't talked about media queries in here yet, but you can use CSS variables with media queries. The idea with a media query is you want your site to look as nice as possible on any and all devices. All right, so. Fonts. We've looked in here a little bit and I've changed the font family, but you may or may not have noticed that, well, where are we? When I went in here and do we have any font families? And yes, we do right now. So notice if I just say font family and I say this, let's just grab this first one. All right. So let's look at a couple things regarding this. First thing, what this means is I want you to use the Gil Sans font if it's available on the user's machine. If it's not available on the user's machine, use the Gil Sans MT font. If that font's not available, use the Calibri font. If that font's not available, use the Trubuche MS. And finally, if even that's not available as a fallback, use the Sans Serif font. So with a family, it goes from major to minor order. And as soon as it finds one that it knows, it will use that one. All right, if you don't like these fonts, you can go out to fonts.google.com where there's about 1,100 more fonts that you can download. All right, and notice when I do a file save now, when I come back in here and go over to here, you may not, may not be able to tell that it looks a little bit different because it's a different font. All right, but let's do this, one, two. Let's knock this down so we only show a couple of these instead of four of them. All right, that's the first thing. And the second thing, let's put a different font in there where hopefully it'll really stand out. Um, I know the Courier News stands out, not in a great way, but... Okay. Again, kind of hard to tell. We can remove that silly looking image that we've got behind here. And there you can see it. Okay. Now, font, when you put in font, it, there are different types of font attributes. The font family I've shown you now. The font weight I've also shown, it's typically like bold or something like that. The stretch we'll look at in a minute. The font style we'll look at in a minute. The font size for this, you know, the actual size that's in there. So the family, as it says, sets the font family to use. Goes from major to minor order. You don't want to do something typically like this. Because if they don't have Helvetica listed, you're not sure exactly what you're going to get. So typically at the end, you will end it with either serif or sans serif font. All right, so here's your serif fonts. Some of the more common, Georgia, Palatino, Times New Roman, and sans, I'm sorry, Times rather. And then sans serif fonts, which are the ones that are right here. And then there are some monospace fonts, which are really neither of them. All right. So the font weight, notice, normal, bold, bolder, lighter, etc. You can either do that. I always just use bold. But you can also use numbers that go from 100 to 900, 
with 100 be the latest font being the latest font and 900 being the boldest font. All right. Stretch, as it says, allows you to choose a narrow or wide face for the font if available. Never used it. Font style allows you to get to add italicizing. There's a few other things that you can set as well. Font size, again, we've already talked about. All right. You can use, as it says, a length value, pixels, M's, REMs, percentages, predefined keywords, or you can use some of the ones that are in here. So notice, for example, with this XX small, if I were to come in here, and I'll remove it right away, but if I said font size XX small, then notice how much smaller that got. All right. And if you say, geez, I didn't really notice any difference. Well, you see the size now, but let's go from XX small to XX large. And again, hopefully then you can really tell the difference between them. There's a few font variant things that you can use in here. Normal is the default. You can put things in smaller caps, as it says, if you want to do that. Now, when you set these things, you can set them one at a time, or you can set them together on a line. All right. So, you know, again, we could put all of this stuff, so font size, font family, font weight, etc., or you can combine all of them together on one line. It says if we add the other properties, they need to be put in the correct order. So this is the order it expects. Now, the good thing is usually if you don't put it in the right order or if you confuse the system, it'll just ignore the line. All right. But that's good and bad. It's good in that it doesn't give you an error, but it's bad in that it doesn't give you actually what you wanted. All right. Loading custom fonts with font face. As it says, font face lets you add a new font family name. Kind of difficult because you've got to go in. These are the different kinds of fonts. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with doing it. However, if I do this, just to show you, I'm going to go out to fonts dot google dot com last time i checked i think it was 1052 now it's 1054 so i'm going to grab something that looks really different so let's just grab this one this quahiri i think it is all right so you can see how different that looks so i don't want to even do the download i'm just going to come in here and let's see select this style okay so i put in this i grab this Typically, you know, it should go in your head section, and I will put it in my head section, and I will put it right below my tag, my link right there. There it is. All right, so there they are. Then, so let's save, and then in my styles file, I want to come in then and just say font family and, and put in this. Now, this is going to look not real great, but just to show you that indeed it works. So there it is. Go back to our page, and there it now is. So that's how easy it is to bring in another font from Google Fonts. Now, when you bring these in, read because there's different ways that you can bring them in. There's different types of uh, levels of lightness darkness that you can add you can bring in as many or as few as you want or need to have and also they'll they'll typically will tell you that if you pick font a that font a goes very well with font b so you might want to put your headings in font a and in font b you might want to put in your text as an example all right All right, so some of the typography stuff that's in here, and again, hopefully just taking a quick look at it, this makes at least some sense to you, the stuff that's in there, and what do I mean by that? All right, well, it says we've already talked about fonts. Let's talk about more about styling. There's text transform, and what I can do there, for example, is I can transform things to uppercase or lowercase. There's text decoration, which will allow, for example, if I say text decoration none, 
it'll remove the underlines and quite often you'll do that um, like for your navigation for your hyperlinks there's text align which you can align text to left right center and justify there's vertical and line vertical alignment there's a line height so if you want a little bit more spacing between lines you can work with line height you can set indents if you want to do that make it look like i remember back when i was a kid going to school we had to indent paragraphs type of thing all right there's word spacing so you can have the amount of space between words letter spacing for the amount of space between letters you can put shadows in with text all right you can play with the white space you've got the tab sizes i mean, most of the stuff that's in here probably makes sense all right direction i believe is set ltr which is left to right but in some countries that you read right to left so you could reset that all right so here's the text transform capitalize first letter so it's kind of like a title case uppercase lowercase and none which is the default so if i say that i want to do this let's just remove that div that's in there and we'll say we want to text transform our paragraphs into all uppercase again didn't do it Still didn't do it. So was this inside of paragraphs? My dog is. Well, why didn't it do that? These are all paragraphs. I'll tell you what. Let's remove, for right now, let's just remove that extra font that we put in there. All right, we'll just remove that. And for the styles, we'll set this back again to just like to Arial or something. All right, we'll do it like that. I don't know what they have in there. There we go. And you'll notice the uppercase took effect. All right. And just as we did uppercase, we can come in here and do lowercase, where everything is now in lowercase. And what was the other one? I think it's title case, but let's double check. Capitalize. All right, and that does it in title case. All right. Text decoration, as I told you, the only one that never has been very well supported has been Blink. All right, for a while at least, it was only supported, I think it was through uh, Firefox, but I'm not even sure. You can underline something overline something line through the none, none is the one that's used most often so if i wanted my paragraphs all underlined why i'd want to do this i would have no idea but i could highlight this add that into here oops and you'll notice that now everything's underlined it's really irritating so i'm going to remove it just put none and you'll notice now those are gone, but they're still here. If I actually wanted to remove them from my anchor tags, then what I'd have to do is I'd have to say, let's, read, let's grab this. I'd have to say for my anchor tags, I want text decoration none. And notice if I do that now that the underlines are gone. Okay. Text align, I've already mentioned. Vertical align, as it says, how inline elements are aligned, and there's different ways of doing that. Line height, I've mentioned. Let's, let's try that one. And I'm going to make it a little bigger just so that you see it. Um, 
I got a feeling that if I put this in and I put in a line height, let's double that, make it like 1.8. All right, you probably don't see a whole heck of a lot in there. But let's go in and um, where we actually, oops, where we actually have in here the text, you know, my name is, etc. Let's grab this. There. Now I put it in eight times in the same paragraph. See that? How it looks kind of smushed together. All right. So that's with it stuck at 1.8 rem. I thought it would be bigger than that. But that's the line height. So let's make the line height. Uh, that's a little too much. Probably 3 rem. How's that? And again, you can see how much more spaced out it looks. All right. And these are all aesthetic things that we're talking about right here. All right, some people use them for a little. Some people use them a lot. The word spacing, the spacing between each word, we've talked about that. You can go all the way down to the spacing between each letter. Text shadow, let's do that. Let's add a text shadow to each paragraph. And you'll notice that when we look now, you can see the shadowed effect. And if you say, I can't, well, then all we have to do for you to not see the shadowed effect, there it is. And if I just come back in here and I comment that line out, now it's taken away. So you can really can see the difference. And there's another example in here as well where they use a color. By default, it uses black. So let's bring this up. Oh, let's bring this back in here. Okay. I don't know how yellow will look on there, but you see that. A little irritating, but again, that's typically just done for effect. All right. So again, many of these are, are things you probably wouldn't use that much. word break the overflow one is one that you could use as it says if a long is a line is too long or a word to fit in a line you can make it overflow to outside this the overflow can be kind of important type of thing because it's it's the old proverbial what if you try to stuff 10 pounds worth into a five pound bag what happens all right and depending on how you set it up in here you can have it add for example either um Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? These things right here, like for whatever reason, I can't think of the word right now. But you can add those, all right, horizontal or vertical types of tabs or whatever you want to call them, or none. You can have it overflow. You can hide it, etc. All right. All right, that brings us to the box model, which is something totally different. So I think even though we're at 18 minutes here and I like to go to at least 20, I'm not going to. I'm going to stop right here and I'll pick it up in the next lecture.